I'm Danny Gregory, and this is Draw With Me. And I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy uh, a little break today, uh, kicking off the new year by doing maybe your first drawing of the year. In my case, it's here's my first drawing of the year. I drew it on a post-it. Not quite a self-portrait, but... Um, and the idea behind Draw With Me is that we just spend half an hour, 45 minutes every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time doing a drawing together. And it's not a drawing lesson. It's not even a drawing demonstration. It's just me drawing, you drawing, us hanging out, having a chat, and getting some stuff done. So, Happy New Year to everybody. I am excited by 2020. I'm done with 2019. And uh, this is the year when... Well, when we draw, I'm not going to make any grand proclamations for myself. Maybe you have some huge plans of your own for New Year's resolutions. Um, I'm not such a fan of them, generally because uh, I don't know how well I adhere to them. I'm more into mid-year resolutions or occasional resolutions. So, so today, you may notice that I'm, if you've ever seen Draw With Me before, you'll notice that I'm in a different location. I am in Phoenix, Arizona where um, I am here um, helping out my family with some stuff. It's been, um, it's been an interesting few days, and we have a few more days to go here. But um, Phoenix is a great city, and the weather is normally nicer here than it is in New York. Actually, when I got here um, a couple days ago, it was actually warmer in New York City than it was in Phoenix. But things have warmed up a bit here and it's going to be in the mid 60s i think so that will be very pleasant very nice but meanwhile i'm here in a in a hampton inn enjoying uh, their wi-fi and hopefully it's it's okay for you today too um so i'm glad that you're all here and so today i have this ambitious goal right it's the first drawing of the year let's make a masterpiece so what we're going to do is we're going to draw the Mona Lisa. Now, if that sounds daunting, I understand. Um, if that seems unoriginal, well, it's true. It was done for the first time, I think, about 500 years ago. I think we're nearing the 500th anniversary, or possibly even 600th anniversary. I don't know. I should have wikipedia it, it in advance, but I didn't. Um, but anyway, we're going to draw the Mona Lisa. So hopefully, by now, you have a copy of the Mona Lisa if not the original. If you're in the Louvre watching this, all the better. But failing that, uh, go and Google Mona Lisa and just get yourself a, a, an image and put it up on the computer in the, f in the frame next to what we're doing or open a, your old art history book from college. Let's look at the Mona Lisa. I'll put up a little copy that I'll be drawing from, but have your own. Get your own damn Mona Lisa. Don't be hogging mine. But... Um, and also, I'm going to be drawing on the iPad. The reason for that is because I am far from home and don't have all my usual broadcasting studio with hundreds of cameras and big piles of art supplies. I just have the old iPad with me. So I'm going to be drawing in Procreate, but don't worry about that. I'm just, you draw you, draw you I'll draw me. We'll both draw Mona Lisa. Um, so get out a pen if you want to some markers, some watercolors, however it is, some oil paints, uh, perhaps some prepared wooden panels that your, um, that your team has, has made for you, like I'm sure Leonardo had. But um, grab a picture of the Mona Lisa. And now let me, let me tell you what my objectives are with it when it comes to this exercise. It's not to create, a, 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 what should I say, a forgery of the Mona Lisa, a perfect copy. It's more to be inspired by her to create something that if somebody looks at it and goes, is that the Mona Lisa? That looks like the Mona Lisa. Bingo, you've done it, okay? Or if they look at it and go, what the heck is that? <laughs> and you had a good time making it, bingo, that'll do too, all right? So let's pull out the Mona Lisa. Vanessa, you're in Tempe, Arizona. Excellent. Well, I am planning to go to the Heard Museum. Uh, I, I would love to see the new um, Hockney show that is there. I love, um, as you know, I love David Hockney and his 
iPad work has been a big inspiration to me as well. So um, I wasn't sure if this show had something that I hadn't seen before, but uh, I've heard that it's a really good one. So I'm going to try and get there. We went to, on New Year's Eve, we went to the Botanical Gardens here in Phoenix, and they had this beautiful show of these kind of life-size or larger animals made out of recycled plastic with light bulbs in them. Sounds kind of a bit odd, but it was gorgeous. So imagine giant snails, like 10 feet high, made of yellow plastic with a lit up, you know, uh, in the middle of cactuses. Or at one point there were like a hundred um, wolves made of white plastic with lights in. It was just gorgeous. So anyway, that was, so I, I plan to see a bit more art if I have the time, but we are in the midst of doing stuff. So we'll try and get to it. So, all right. So here we go. Um, I'm going to switch and we're going to look at my iPad. Here it is, my iPad. And there's Mona. She's ready to be drawn. And uh, let's get into this. So let's start drawing Mona Lisa. Um, I'm going to use... I'm going to start sketching out in a kind of generalized way. Um, I think I'm going to use... She's sort of yellowish, isn't she? So let's make her... I'm just gonna, again, my objective is to just capture her spirit somehow. Um, have you ever seen the Mona Lisa in person? I have. I think the first time I saw her was when I was about 16. And I was struck by how small she was. You know, this is a painting that is, it's, I mean, I would say arguably the most famous painting in history, right? But when you go and see it, it's really kind of not that impressive. I mean, it's small. It's small. It's behind a uh, kind of bulletproof piece of glass. And um, it's... You, know, you have to get, kind of get close to it to see it, and when you do, it's uh, you know you're fighting your way through a crowd first of all, and you know it's sort of cool, but you know you kind of want to go to the gift store and buy a postcard of it instead. So, but it is, it is certainly a famous image, and so it's also an image that has been messed with a lot, right? I mean, so many artists have done their own interpretations of the Mona Lisa, so why shouldn't we? I'm sure Leonardo wouldn't mind. Um, but yeah, it's... Maybe you remember the, the cover of National Lampoon where they did Mona Gorilla. I remember that from when I was in high school. Um, so yeah, so she is really an iconic image. No question about that. And I think, you know, a lot of times we get the thing we think about the Mona Lisa is the smile, right? That that um, enigmatic smile they always refer to as enig enigmatic. Um, so let's not get too overwhelmed by that because there's a lot of other things in this image that are essential, that are the things that we that, that identify her. So like you could look at this right now, you probably know that this is the Mona Lisa, just even though I haven't drawn in any features. So don't feel... Um, don't feel like concerned about that yet. In fact, I think I'm probably going to leave the smile till the end. That might be the very last thing that I do. Because uh, there's a lot of other things that are interesting about this image. Um, and that is, it's a portrait, obviously. Is it a good portrait? Does it deserve to be thought of as the greatest painting of all time? I think it's the most famous painting, probably. But is it the greatest? I don't know. There's certainly a lot of paintings that I prefer to this one. How do you feel about it? I mean, it's... Is it even a good portrait of whoever it's a portrait of, right? There's a lot of question about who was da Vinci actually drawing when he, when he drew this... When he painted it, excuse me. Is it... Is it uh, La Gioconda, that's the other name of it. So is it the, is it the 
wife of a prince? Is she a princess? Is it a daughter of somebody? I don't know. I think there's a lot not known about it. The thing I've always wondered is, I think Da Vinci had it when he died. I think it was in his, in his, um, among his possessions. Isn't that true? Does anybody know? So, um, Claire, can you rewind? I don't think you can rewind it. I mean, you can rewatch it, but all you've missed is me talking about being in Phoenix and talking about the Mona Lisa and how we're not going to be intimidated by it. Um, but I think, so what I've always thought is, is if it's such a great portrait, wouldn't the person who paid him to do it have kept it? Like, why, why did it end up in the, in the Louvre of all places? Um, I know that da Vinci was in Paris at some point in his life, maybe toward the end of his life. I don't know. I don't remember the circumstances. I do remember reading, there's that huge, fat biography of da Vinci that came out a couple years ago by uh, Walter Isaacson. I remember reading about a, a third of it and then feeling like I wanted to go on to other things. And I think da Vinci is great, but I think the thing... The thing I've always liked about Da Vinci the most was his sketchbooks, of course, rather than uh, his paintings. But what I was going to say about his about this as a portrait is there's a certain kind of you know. I remember when I was in high school, I would doodle pictures in the uh, in the margins, in the, and there was always like a person here. I'll destroy. There's always just like a person kind of look like this that I would draw, you know, that was sort of like my guy, or there might be a guy in profile that I would draw that was kind of like this, you know, that was sort of, that was like my high school style of drawing. No matter who it was, it would always kind of look like something in that range. And the thing about da Vinci's drawings, uh, there's a certain kind of draw, of painting that he does where the person's face looks a lot like this person's face. I don't know if it's some sort of idealized ide thought that he has of, of a woman, or, but I feel like there's other paintings that look like they're almost of this person. And I wondered always, was, was that because um, he kind of made this person up? There should be another reason to wonder whether this is actually a portrait. I'm going to make my Mona Lisa look a little tired because I'm just feeling that way. You know, she had a rough New Year's. She had a rough holiday season. She was doing a lot of stuff. And uh, so she, she was, she's feeling a little hungover, my Mona. Yes, okay, so London Jean has confirmed that um, that this painting was did belong to da Vinci. So again, making me wonder, did he just make it up? Was it just like a you know an idealized woman in his mind, or was it um, was it just uh, an exercise maybe? or just an image that he had in his mind that he liked the idea of? as opposed to being a painting that he did for, for a customer. Does it matter? Does it matter if it doesn't really look like a person? I mean, we so often worry when we do paint, when we do portraits, does it really look like the person? And is it therefore a failure? So maybe that's something to think about. We're judging our own art. And what are the really important things about doing this as a portrait? Is it, is it, um, is it the feeling of it, or is it the specific individual? landmarks 
You know, or can we use it as almost a theme, like a like a jazz musician would? You know, if you a jazz musician so often will begin with a popular song, a song that everybody knows, but then they'll vary it. They'll vary it and express themselves through it. So they use this theme as a way to tell their own story. You know, could we do that? Can we just maybe use the Mona Lisa to talk about how we feel rather than how Da Vinci felt? Or just to play around, you know, just to play around this, this first or second day of the year with our Christmas presents. What did you get for Christmas? Did you get any art supplies? Were you looking for a project? Maybe the Mona Lisa is your project. I mean, it could be an interesting thing to, to take the Mona Lisa and to draw her over and over again. And, and each time we do, to say, huh, almost like a self-portrait in Mona Lisa. That every time we reinterpret her, we're saying something about ourselves. My Mona's looking a little portly. You know, like she had too many snacks over the holidays. Eat a bit too much, uh, too much candy. Whoops. What is your Mona Lisa saying about you so far? Because maybe the Mona Lisa was in fact a self-portrait. Could that be that that Da Vinci was actually? I, I don't know if he was drawing himself in drag, but um, you know we don't really have. I think we don't really have any self-portraits that he made. So, Neshka is apparently not good at drawing portraits. Well, who is? People who draw a lot of portraits. So, keep going. Keep going, Neshka. It doesn't really, and don't think of it as a portrait. Just think of it as, you know, imagine you, say you're good at drawing cars. Imagine that Mona Lisa is just a car that you're drawing. Don't get hung up on that. And also, let's think about, you know, maybe the Mona Lisa is actually a landscape. Right? We, we always think about this thing that I've drawn so far, this woman here in the foreground. But maybe what we should be focusing on more is the background. Because look at this background. It's pretty cool. Right? Look, at the, look back here. Look at these, these craggy, this craggy landscape. I mean, this is all made up. Must be. I mean, look, it, on this side, on this side, it's pretty different from this side. They don't really line up at all. This has this mountain up here in the, in the sky. And then down here, there's this road. Where's it leading to? What's it about? We don't even know. So maybe we can look at this not as a portrait at all, but look at it as a landscape with a woman blocking the view. <laughs> I like that idea. The Mona Lisa blocking a beautiful view of the mountains. That's the way I'm going to approach it. Hey, lady, get out of the way. Maybe I need to do uh, a whole version of this that is uh, like Photoshop her out of the way. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to approach this. I'm going to overlay it, multiply it. Da Vinci is also interesting as an artist because we, we don't really think of him that much as an artist anymore. I feel like we think of him as this like incredible sort of multi-variable genius who seemed to be good at everything. And, you know, he was like this creative guy who wealthy, powerful people brought in to solve all kinds of problems. You know, they're like, Da Vinci's a smart guy. Let's see what he thinks about building cannons. Or, um, I know Da Vinci isn't really a, 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 a sculptor, but I could use a giant horse made out of brass yeah, I mean, 
or bronze, is it? Yeah, bronze. And one of the things I think about da Vinci that was heartbreaking was he um, did make this giant bronze horse. And I think, I don't really remember that clearly because I'm getting old, but I seem to remember that he made this horse for somebody or other, and then that person, um, in the middle of him making the horse sculpture, said... You know what? Actually, I need this bronze to make some cannons. Could you melt it down and make me a bunch of cannon, cannons out of it? And that's what he ends up having to do. So there's sort of drawings and sketches of this horse, but the actual thing is long gone because, you know, the limited resources, this, this metal was like way too important to be wasting on uh, art. Such is life. The life of the artist. So. Happens to all of us. Set out with this noble plan. Now Bonnie says she sucks at faces. Which is kind of a strange thing to say, anyway. But, uh, Again, leave out the face. Draw the rest. So what? See if you can make it look like the Mona Lisa without ever drawing the face in there. What would that be like? Can you do it? Try it. Again, our objective is to avoid beating ourselves up. But instead... To have fun. Let's make that our motto for this year. Can we? Please? Our motto being no pain art making. Can you do it? Can you encourage yourself and not say you suck at anything, but just say you need to work harder at it? You need to do more, I need to do more. I need to practice drawing faces more. So here's what I'm going to do. You can say to yourself, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, every day, while I'm eating my lunch, whoops, while I'm eating my lunch, I'm going to Google the word face. And whatever face comes up, I'm going to do a 10-minute drawing of that face in a sketchbook. Then I'm going to put that sketchbook away until the next day. And I'm going to turn the page. I'm going to draw another face. I'm going to keep doing that until I no longer suck. Until I'm ready to start sucking at something else. And maybe what I'm going to suck at next is... Marine animals. I suck at drawing marine animals, you might say to yourself. So you start drawing, uh, you know, drawing hippopotamuses or drawing... Salamanders. Are salamanders marine animals? No. Uh, seals. Fish. And every day I'm going to Google fish and whatever image pops up. Any image could be a filet of fish sandwich pops up. I'm going to draw it. And uh, bit by bit, I'm going to improve that skill. That's all it takes. So it's not really helpful to say you aren't good at something. It's more interesting to say I'm going to get good at something. So, Barbara Poole is drawing George Washington, which is an interesting thing to do, because maybe you say, you know what? What if you'd set out to draw George Washington? Maybe you'd end up with the Mona Lisa. Could be cool. I'm drawing... Something is who looks vaguely like the Mona Lisa. <laughs> so looks, looks vaguely like uh, I don't know, like a sort of a, a large, large man in a dress. I'm gonna have to clean up her hair a bit. She looks like she really has had a rough time. I need to give her. Oops, that's too much. I need, to, I need to clean her up a bit. She looks disgraceful. 
kind of a hair hairstyle is that? Mona, what have you been up to? Deb says she drew her hand every day. A hand. Hopefully it was her, her own hand. Maybe it was somebody else's hand. Maybe you had a hand model who came in. Maybe you had a severed hand that you were drawing. But anyway, presumably it was your own hand. That's great. That's a great way to make progress drawing hands. Hands are very... Hands are difficult things to feel comfortable drawing, right? Because, because we... You know, we discussed this a few weeks ago when we were drawing hands. We did, a, we did a draw with me about it, drawing your hand. And, uh, you know, your hand is a thing that you think you know, right? You think you know it like the back of your hand, but actually it's a very complicated thing. And particularly when you put it into different, different um, positions, it takes on different qualities. So you have to kind of get to know the anatomy of your hand. I, I feel I'm feeling the need to put in this that enigmatic smile. The question is what is the instrument to use? There's been a lot of study of like why what is the deal with this smile? And I can't remember what their deal is with the smile. It'd be helpful to know at this point, as I'm attempting to reproduce it, what exactly is going on with the smile. Or would it be better to just not worry about it at all? I think that's what I'm going to do. Distract myself by drawing the eye. So what do you think about New Year's resolutions? Have you made any art resolutions? What does that amount to? Having an art resolution. Is it a particular project? Or is it something more sort of general, like I must make more art? Or I must make some art every day? Or I will make art before breakfast? Or I will come to every draw with me every Thursday? I will do more and more things to make myself feel better about my creativity. Could be any of those things. I think the more, the more, um, the ones that make you feel good are probably the best ones, the ones you'll stick to. Just a kind of more gen generalized resolution. You know what I'm starting to think is the face is so important to her, but what if I treated it in as abstract a way as I'm treating all the other parts of her? Bit of a cop out. That's my cop-out for the day. That's my New Year's resolution, is to make more cop-outs. Neshka's resolution is to do more experimentation, is to try new things in art. That's an excellent one. 
that's good. You know, we can get into get into a habit of just doing the things that we do well or doing the things that make, you know, that we're familiar with or using the materials that we have at hand. And it is a good idea to say I'm going to start reaching branching out. I'm going to try new things. I'm going to take risks. I'm going to finally take a course at sketchbook school. That's a good resolution. I could take my class on a learning to draw with the iPad. You could, <laughs> I'm not sure that this particular example is, is going to inspire you, but um, you know, starting to draw on the iPad is a good resolution. I think it's a fun, it's a fun and endless thing to learn about. There's so many tools. There's so many different kind of aspects to it that you can learn about. Um, so that might be an option. Claire says she'd like to do a drawing a day, even a little one. That's a good idea. You know, in fact, going back to this thing that I was showing you, my little um, post-it drawing, that might be something that you could do, is you could say to yourself, I'm going to draw, at the very minimum, I'm going to draw on a post-it every day. And stick it up on the wall in a place that will remind you to do it. You know, and see, and then there will come days where you go, you know what, drawing on a post-it wasn't enough. I need to do more. I need to do other things. And so uh, that will springboard you into bigger projects, which is cool. So Herta got a Draw Lucy for Christmas. Ah, yes. Um, a camera lucida or camera... Um, Camera Lucida, which is basically like a little prism that you look through that's on a stick, and uh, it, whatever's in front of you, kind of a vague image of it gets pr promote, gets um, you see it on the page in front of you. It's almost like tracing from reality. I have one of those. I've played around with it. I was inspired by, by David Hockney's experiments with it to try it out. It was pretty cool. Um, it's a toy. I think, although it has a really important role in art history, if you care to read about it. David Hockney wrote an entire book about his theories about it. I don't know that da Vinci used it. I'm not sure that optics were at that point with him. They might have been, actually. I'm not sure it's the kind of thing he would really be into, though. Not sure what to resolve about her, what to decide I feel about her face. I'm admittedly disappointed. But it seems like an opportunity to do something more interesting than just copying her face. So let's try that. Are you getting a good likeness of the Mona Lisa? Claire says another resolution is to finish some of the many wonderful sketchbook school courses she has. It's interesting. We were just having a conversation about that this morning. You know, like, is it okay to sign up for a course and then not complete it? You know, I think about all the art books that I own, right? So many books on drawing, on painting. I certainly haven't read all of them cover to cover. But... And I also don't say to myself, well, one of these days I'm going to sit down and do it. But, but they're there. They're there when I need them. They're like a good resource, like a good friend who says, hey, let's draw together. And uh, that's, that's, that's a good reason to own them. That's a good reason to have gotten them in the first place. So I think a lot of times we feel like um, if we didn't do it right then, we maybe never will. But, you know, when it comes to something like a sketchbook school course that you basically own forever, you can just keep coming back to it. Even as you get new computers, new technology, it will still work. So unlike, say, a DVD, you know, it's like a book. It'll always be there for you. So that's a good reason to, to have one just sitting, sitting by. It's, it's okay if you haven't had a chance to go all the way through it, you know. Because I think there are also times when there's only so much 
learning that you can absorb at a given moment, right? So you might say to yourself, um, I've learned this one lesson. Let me keep applying it. And um, and you know, keep using it. So, so yes, Thistle says she got a good sketch, but she's not sure it fits the Mona Lisa. Well, that exactly. All the better. You got a good sketch. That's the main thing, right? Yeah, you had fun. I've had fun. I'm going to keep working on this. I think maybe I'll get maybe I'll share it with you at some point in the future. Um, my portly, portly Mona. Hmm. I felt good. I've been doing a lot of physical work the last couple of days, and it's nice to just sit and draw for half an hour. I hope you feel that way too. Um, Hillary says she's going to try to get past the creative block that she struggled with for years. That, that is a really unpleasant feeling, I know. I think if you, if you give it the title, creative block, it can make it even harder to get past it. So I would say, rather than struggling with a block, just start making stuff. Maybe you'll make bad stuff. But that's not a block anymore. Now you're no longer blocked from creating. Um, but you're on the path to making stuff that matters to you. And that is, that's the key, right? You know, so look at something like um, our mixed media journaling class. Or I think I really enjoyed about that class is the idea that you kind of come into it with a blank page. And I think this is true of so many kinds of art making, even draw with me. You come into it with a blank page and you start to just move things around, move paint on the page, start drawing lines, and a story unfolds. It's like listening to a story that somebody else is telling. And it may not be a story that intrigues you or capt captivates you or was the story you thought you were there to hear, but that story starts to come out. And then you let yourself go. And, you know, I, I talked about this last week, about this idea of kind of willingly suspending disbelief, like when you're watching a movie. And you just say, I'm going to go with this story and see where it takes me. And just that process, saying to yourself, when I sit down to make something, that's what I'm here to do, is to just make, to see what happens. And then the whole idea of a creative block kind of vanishes because you are creating. You're no longer blocked. And in that process of creation, you will start to discover new stories. And the stories may be different than the ones that you thought you were going to tell yourself. They may be different than the images you thought you were supposed to create. But you're making stuff. And you enjoyed it. Or you had a powerful experience in doing it. And as you do that, it propels you to do it more often. And to keep making stuff. So good, bad, or indifferent ultimate result is less important than the process, that process of sitting down and just pushing paint, pushing ink, pushing pixels, as I was, you know, all those things. I mean, here Deb is saying that mixed media course was a life changer for me. I'd like to know more about that because I think that that was true for a lot of people, that the idea of a lot of times when we sit down and we try to capture a likeness, that gives us a certain kind of pressure that can make us unhappy. You know, the judgment that comes up right away, does it look like the thing I said? Does it look like the Mona Lisa? And if it didn't, is it a failure? But when you're dealing in abstraction, a lot of times that can just be pure creation because, you know, you don't know what it was supposed to look like. You don't know where it's going to lead you. And that may not be the ultimate art form that you really want to focus on, but it can be the thing that gets you moving, gets you moving into creation and stops you thinking about struggling with a block and starts you thinking about being an artist, being a creative person, being a maker of things, or being just somebody who has fun with crayons. It can be that too. You know, again, think about your six-year-old self and how you could just sit down at a table with a box of crayons 
and some paper and just start making things? And can you approach creativity that same way? Um, you know, Stissel says, letting go of one's expectations of one's work is probably the hardest thing, but one's the most important thing to do. That's exactly the way, what I was trying to get at. Um, you know, that if you can just say to yourself, rather than I'm going to draw my dog because I'm going to hang it on the wall or I'm going to give it to my mother as a Christmas present, if instead you can just say, I'm going to look at my dog, I'm going to pick up a pen, and I'm going to doodle, call it doodling if that makes it less, less uh, loaded. And I think getting into that habit, maybe that's your resolution for this year, is simply to play more and simply to take back off on that pressure. And it's a pressure that we, you know, we started to give ourselves when we were probably 11 or 12. That's really when it began. We transitioned from art being a play to art being something that would identify us. We're the kid who draws well. Or, hey, look, I drew Superman. And if we're worried that somebody else is going to go, that doesn't really look like Superman. Or, why does he have three fingers? Or, hmm, you know, he looks kind of fat. If we worry about that, then we back off and we say, I'm not going to do it as much. So that judgment derails us. It doesn't make us better. It just derails us. There is a kind of judgment that does make you better. And that's the judgment that says, um, let me judge my experience and then let me start to set goals. Now that I'm in the flow and I'm feeling confident and my lines are feeling strong and I'm starting to get results that gave me pleasure, now I'm going to start setting goals for myself. And those goals can be incremental. They, may, they can also not be goals that are about the result. They can also be about the process. So my goal is to draw hands every day for a month. That's the goal. Not to draw them well necessarily, but to just draw them every month, every day for a month. And you know, of course, that if you do that, at the end of the month, those hands will be more likely you wanted them to be. There's no question about that. It's, it's, it's building muscles. And you will get there. So make those the judgments that you say. Make those the expectations, which is simply the habit and the process and the, the, the you know, continuing to do it. So, um, and also, you know, allow yourself to, to play. Allow yourself to experiment, allow yourself to explore new things, new subjects, new tools. Because one of the things that happens when you play with something new is you back off on the judgment because you say, well, it's new. I've never done this before. So therefore, I'm allowed more latitude, right? And so you can also say to yourself, let me draw it upside down. Let me draw something like the Mona Lisa, which of course I'm never going to do as well as the original. I'm not Leonardo da Vinci. That's okay. So set yourself up with challenges that you have an escape hatch. You have a note from your mom to give to the teacher inside your head that says uh, she's never drawn with uh, oil sticks before or he's never drawn an upside-down shoe before or he's showing good progress by drawing every single day and drawing you know, the first picture of a person that shows up on Google. Don't say to yourself, I'm doing it every day and they all suck. I suck at faces. This is not helpful. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not true, first of all, and also it's not productive. So instead, say, I've drawn every day. That's the goal. You know? Give yourself a break in 2020. That's what I plan to do. And, uh, Share with me what you've done. I want to see your Mona Lisas. Share them in the schoolyard if you're a member of the Sketchbook School schoolyard. Or if not, share them anywhere else in social media with hashtag draw with me. And I hope that you've had fun today. So what we did today was number 51 on the Sketchbook School prompt list. What are you saying to yourself? What's prompt list? I haven't given it to you yet. It's my, that's my resolution for 2020, is to finally give you this list. I have the list. We're just trying to figure out the best way to share it with you. So within a week or two, it will be available. I know I keep saying that, but for next week, let's just pick a random number. Let me look. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick a number for us to draw next week. So I won't necessarily tell you what that number is going to be. We'll get there. 
what that thing is going to be, but I have this list. So um, it's going to be, I think we're going to do it in order. We're going to do number 52 next week. So we do 51 this week, we're going to draw 52 next week. And I'll tell you when I announce this in the middle of next week, I'll show with you what that was. 52. I think it's going to be something fun. I think something you like, that will be great. So, um, yes, 52. Think about that. 52, 52 weeks of the year, 52 cards. It's neither of those things, but it could be. So what will it be? We'll see. 52. That'll be a good one. I think you'll enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoyed the Mona Lisa. Hashtag draw with me, share it with me, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is a great way to kick off the year, and we'll do it again next week. I'll be back in New York City. I will be there with my lavish studio. I will have other art supplies, and I will have the answer to what is number 52 to present to you. I'd like to thank you for joining me. I'd like to thank the Hampton Inn for providing reliable Wi-Fi. This has been very good. I was very worried about that. And uh, thank you to Leonardo da Vinci for this week's inspiration. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Draw with me.